Wait, are you videoing me? You guys, we have you absent guys, people. Yeah, that's good. We if have I, Cosmos people. If I gone. ever am missing school, I need you guys to video it. Just this class. I don't care if you're really uh, I don't think so because you were out partying. Okay, let me mark all the absent people. Whoa. Okay, um, so I think today, guys, and I have more people absent second period for Cosmos, um, I'm going to give you 15 minutes of free time today just because we have time in the schedule if I go too fast then your test is Tuesday and Thursday I do not want the test to be Tuesday and Thursday I want you to sign up for office hours on Tuesday and bring in the multiple choice packet the multiple choice packet 40% of the test the Wednesday test is going to be right off that packet so I need you guys to do that packet all right um, essay number five Hey guys, you know, today I have time during collaboration because OT is gone. I am going to rewrite some of these questions uh, from this homework and also from essay six. So this question was written without a calculator this year. Everything is with a calculator. So the problem with uh, questions without a calculator is you talk about the math instead of just doing the math and it's harder to talk about the math. So what information from the graph uh, above is necessary to determine the molarity. You only need one number. What is that number? Give me the number. 23. 23-ish. 23 That's all you need. So what is magical about that? What do you call it, first of all? Equivalence, Equivalence point. And what is this volume? It's the volume required to end the reaction. So you put it right here in the mass. So this is the volume required. Uh, you have 30 mils, so the unknown in the Erlenmeyer flask goes here, and the volume required goes here. Uh, the justification, 23 mils was the answer. The sharp vertical rise at the pH curve appears at the equivalence point. It's, required, uh, it's the volume required. I'm going to change it to have you just do the math and don't talk about it. Just stop talking about math. Just do the math. Explain how this curve can be used to determine the acid dissociation constant of a weak monoproduct acid from henderson hasselbach Oh, justification. At the mid-equivalence point, the concentration of acid equals base. Therefore, and now you just write out the math. If the ratio is 1 to 1, pH equals pKa, the Ka is 10 to the negative pH, which for this acid would be 10 to the negative 5. If you were to repeat the titration uh, using an indicator uh, to signal the endpoint, which would you use? Well, this is acidic. Why is, I'm sorry, basic. Why is the salt basic? Because the acid is a weak acid. And so we're going to shoot for something like an 8. So creosol red, because the pKa of creosol red is about an 8. Uh, which is the same as the pH of the equivalence point, ensuring maximum color change to signal the end of the reaction. Uh, everyone did the strong acid titration, something like that, good enough. Oh my gosh, 2015, I love this. This is it. This is what this year is going to look like. This is the first year in the history of mankind that they gave us an upside down titration of a base. We had never seen that before. It wasn't in the textbooks. It wasn't in any previous test. It wasn't anywhere. No essay had been written like this. Not to mention it, they didn't even do a, a nice little Ami. They did a crazy base. So the graph was really hard. I'm assuming that 100% of students nationwide, except for a handful that are you know, graduates of MIT now, got the graph right. Uh, here's your net reaction. It's a base. Concentration is 0.832, so again, every year they give you a little high school titration, so fun and easy. Uh, we're going to use thymol blue. Oh my gosh, thymol blue? The end of the reaction is acidic. Oh my gosh. Why is the end of the reaction acidic? Because you're protonating a base, so the salt is acidic. So if it's acidic, 2.5, we're going to shoot for thymol blue. Thymol blue, uh, blue changes color just prior to the pH of the equivalence point assuring that maximum uh, accurate measurement. 
Calculate the pH at the mid-equivalence or half equivalence point. It is 4.77. You now have everything you need to know uh, to come up with the graph. What made this graph doable is they gave you the initial starting point and they went ahead and gave you the ending point. Uh, the pH at the end point, they tell you is 2.54 because we never calculate that. The mid-equivalence point you had just graphed the shape of that graph is crazy funky. Okay, got it? But you should know how to do that. Uh, the pH of soft drink. Okay, so now, this is titrating this. Is this sorbate? This is sorbate and this is sorbic acid. They're titrating sorbate to form sorbic acid. Uh, if the sorbate sorbic acid is 50 50, it's 4.77. Now, uh, soft drink is a pH of 3.37 when you add sorbate. Uh, which species is higher in concentration? 3.77 is where? Is it more acidic or more basic? Uh, it's kind of like right here, so it's more basic. So you tell me, do you have more uh, sorbate or, or sorbic acid? More sorbate. The pH is lower, uh, you have more acid. The pH is lower than the pKa. The soda is more acidic than 50-50 ratio. Therefore, you have more sorbic acid than sorbate. Lovely. The homework that you just turned in, lovely homework. Although, I'm going to rewrite a question on that. It was an evil, goofy question. Okay, we'll shoot for some free time today. Just a little bit. Due to abundance, absences, and due to the fact that we got lots of time, lots of time, and due to the fact that we're going to have a Tuesday party. Tuesday packet party. Tuesday packet party. I'm going to go label a Tuesday packet party. Bring your packet in if you want to have a party. All right. Oh my gosh, we should bring donuts. Who's bringing donuts? Hot chocolate. Yeah, Tuesday party. We'll make it a real party during office hours. Parties are allowed during office hours. Okay, so right here we did this uh, and then we stopped. So we have this weak acid, we're forming a, a basic salt, and how much hydroxide is required? 41.3 uh, mils of calcium hydroxide required. We know that because we know how to write a balanced reaction. Okay, on B, explain whether the pH of the equivalence point is less than seven, seven, or greater than seven. Wow, guys, talk to me about that salt. Is it neutral? Is it basic, or is it a salt? Wait, did you guys not get the minute? Oh, the bell rang. Finish it. Isn't Van gone too today? Yeah. RCC. <laughs> they're at RCC team. Oh. <laughs> Too bad they're not performing outside. That would be more exciting. Okay, did everyone get it? Are we good? <laughs> okay, got it. Good, 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 good. Now, indicate whether the pH of the equivalence point is basic, acidic, or neutral. Is this salt basic, acidic, or neutral? Basic. basic. Um, write the reaction. Give me a reaction that justifies the fact that that salt is basic. Write that reaction and then we'll talk about it. Okay, by the way, calcium is a spectator. No one would dare write calcium in there, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> Hypobromite does what to water? <clears throat> What's it called? Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. It hydrolyzes water. 
Uh, the pH is greater than seven. The salt of a weak acid is a weak base that hydrolyzes water, or you could say hypobromite hydrolyzes water to produce hydroxide. This is a weak base because hypobromous acid is a weak acid. This is your reaction, hydrolysis. You're gonna write two hydrolysis reactions on the test. Okay, for two of the forms, your graph, the big boy graph, this entire thing over here, two forms will get an acid, two forms will get a base. So we're gonna go ahead and practice the base. I would like you to do this whole thing on your own. Starting with 4A, read through that and let's do it. Okay, check your work on A, got that? Good. On B, you need two calculations. Number one, calculate the mid-equivalence point. Number two, calculate the equivalence region. You need to calculate that. You need to calculate this. Where is that going to be? Calculate those two things and then grab both. The equivalence region is the volume required. Figure out how much is required. What is the pH of the mid-equivalence point? 9.26. Good. See, you have that memorized. You have to show the calculation. That is the calculation. pOH equals pKb. Subtract from 14. Now, as you're calculating the volume required, be care careful. They give you two, uh, two volumes. One volume you do not need. One volume just says that they're flooding the entire graph. Which of those two volumes is flooding the entire graph, 30 or 40? 40. 40 means they're going to flood the entire graph, so don't use this volume. You need to tell me what volume of acid is required to reach the equivalence point. Don't use 40. 40 is the graph. They're just flooding the entire graph from left to right.
All right, guys, what volume is required? It's not there yet? Did you guys get 15 mils required? Yeah. 15 mils required. Now, if you look at the graph, it's kind of funny because 15 mils is way over on the left. That's okay. We're going to do it. Now, first of all, this is a weak base. So you're going to start it kind of low. You're going to aim for 9.26, and you're going to aim for 15 mils. And you need to show me that the pH at 15 mils is acidic. So this is neutral. The pH here, the equivalence point, is somewhere around here. Put it out there, that's the equivalence point. Write a reaction to justify the fact that your salt is acidic. You formed ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is an acid. So you must always write a reaction to justify why your salt is acidic if you're protonating an amine. Your two calculations, oh, I went through, fast through the math. Do you guys see the math? Uh, in the Erlenmeyer flask, you have 30 mils of ammonia, the concentration of ammonia. Uh, you're adding acid. 15 mils of acid will neutralize your ammonia. Now, because it's a titration graph, they're gonna flood the whole thing up to 40, but you start with 30 to figure out how much is required. 15 is required. Uh, so I have the reactions up here. So why is this salt basic? Why is this salt, if you're titrating a base, an acid? So here you have an acid. You're adding hydroxide. Name the salt. Your salt here is sodium uh, acetate. Why is acetate basic? Why is my pH high? Because that is the conjugate of a weak acid. So once you neutralize the acid, the salt is basic. Here, once you neutralize your ammonia, you just form salt and water. Neutralization is salt and water. But name the salt, ammonium chloride. So you neutralize the base, and you form a salt and water, but your salt is ammonium chloride. That's an acidic salt. <laughs> you have to show me that it's acidic. You have to. And we do it using that. And you have to write a reaction to justify it. Why did you make your salt acidic? Because the salt is acidic. Okay. It's a protonated amine. Okay? Um, I didn't. I'm grading the fact that it's acidic. Now, oh, that's their key. That's their key. It's not my key. Uh, they never grade. We used to calculate this pH. But they got rid of that like 20 years ago. I only taught that for two years, and then they got rid of it. Um, right now, they're grading the fact that you know that it's acidic. If you make the equivalence point 7, you lose that point because it's not neutral. Neutralizing, neutralizing the base is not neutral pH of 7. It's neutral in that the base is gone. You're forming salt and water. The salt is acidic. Questions on any step of that? You have two calculations, and you have one reaction. We good? Okay, I think we get, before you take the test, free response will be Thursday. Before you take that test, um, we're going to do one more practice with methylamine uh, for the basic titrations. Okay, now from, 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 from the table below, select the most appropriate indicator for the titration. Justify your choice. Which indicator do you want to put in the Erlenmeyer flask? The methyl red, the pKa. The pKa of the indicator should be close to the pH at the equivalence points, which will be slightly acidic. Methyl red changes color uh, at an acidic pH. So we're going to use methyl red. That pKa of the dye is close enough to the pKa of my salt. And your salt is acidic. Yes, it is.
Wow, well, I need a sentence frame. That's okay. We're in no hurry. I'll just stand here and get bored. <laughs> okay, it is. I, I can turn the heater on, but I cannot turn it on. Okay, D. D is not so easy. Watch, guys. If. If equal volumes of 0.1 molar ammonia and 0.1 molar ammonium chloride are mixed, is the resulting solution acidic, neutral, or basic? Do you add the same volume of the same concentration of a base and an acid? It's what? Wait, isn't it? Is that one of Is that a buffer? Yeah. Yeah, and what's the pH of that buffer? Now that you have it memorized, what's the pH of that buffer? It's an 8.7.7. Give me the exact pH. Oh, it's 9.26. 9.26. Oh. <laughs> you have to recognize it as a buffer and you have to calculate the pH. It is 9.26. It's basic if equal volumes of a weak base ammonia and the salt of a weak base ammonium chloride are mixed, it will create a basic buffer solution with a pH of 9.26. Do you have a sentence for you? No. no. Damn it. I'm going to fix that today. Never again. So I stand here bored with nothing to do. Wow. I have time to join TikTok. You know, I've never. <laughs> I do. How, how do you Follow join me. TikTok? Maybe you have to be followers. Um, yeah. Oh, should I? Oh, we can see that. We make should make an eight Let's do it. Make your day on TikTok. Log in. <laughs> oh, she's actually doing videos off the There's computer. no way in hell. Yeah, see that? See that? Yeah, there's wow. no way in hell. Yeah, do you know why? You know China limits uh, TikTok access to, to their children? Do you know why? Because China knows the damage done to the brain. Do you guys know Khalil? Yeah, Khalil, he's now researching out at UCR on damage to the brain caused by TikTok. Get off of TikTok, people. It's destroying your brain. It's destroying your generations. Okay, five is super easy. Here we go, guys. You're just going to do five. You got it, you got it, you got it. Okay, question five is easy. Go do all of question five. <laughs> Photographs. <laughs> uh, our children at competition. Can we see? Can I see? Photographs for the party tomorrow. What party? Uh, Cosmos. It's a office hour party. Are we invited? If you can break in. Okay, give me the molar concentration. Quietly do it. Do it. Do it. Wait. Wait. What? Wait. This is the same question that was on tonight's homework, last night's homework. 
and I eat that. What do they want? They want the concentration of this or the concentration of this? Yeah, bam. Do it and don't mess it up. Think, <laughs> math monkey. Don't be math monkey, you have to think. <laughs> In a normal titration, guys, hey guys, can everyone pause for just a moment? In a normal titration, you have been taught to always start with the burette, run your stoichiometry, divide by the unknown. Well, this one's opposite. Start with the burette, go to the concentration of the burette, stoic ratio, and divide by the volume of the unknown, because that's the analyte, we're analyzing the unknown. They flipped it. They want the concentra concentration of the titrant. So start with this volume, divide by that volume. Start with this volume, divide by that volume. It's backwards math. concentration of your analyte, like we know the concentration of the analyte, then it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and then right off the graph, divide by the volume of hydroxide required. So if you look at the graph, look here, this is 14, sort of, kind of, so you want to look at 7, oh, what am I doing? 14. That's 14, sort of, kind of, it's dead center between 12 and 16. So you're doing the math backwards. You want to start with the 10 mils, go to the concentration of your acid, then it's a one-to-one -one ratio. The volume required in the Erlenmacher, in the uh, burette, is about 14 divided by the volume in the burette. Backwards, yes. Let's say like we estimated like 13 or 12. Right? That's fine. Oh, wait, not 12, but like, 12, uh, like 15. 13, that's fine. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> Okay, label that. Evil backwards titration. Evil backwards titration. Um, hey guys. Uh, on the front of your homework tonight, that, that titration was backwards. If you were paying attention, it was backwards. So we'll go over that one tomorrow. Okay, go do C. Okay, do it. Go do C.
Okay, got it? And the justification at the happy equivalence point, the pH of the solution is equal to pKa, therefore the pH equals, what is the pH? No, what's the oh, pH at the happy equivalence point? That is, no, that right here, seven, seven is exactly, what is that exactly? Four, point seven four? Tell you what, let's go do this right here. Go to seven, go do that, label it. PKA equals 4.74, because this is acetic acid, and I know you know that. Now, I also know that you know the KA of acetic acid. If I anti-log 4.74, what is the KA? 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Lovely. <laughs> Beautiful. Right off the graph, the pH equals the pKa, 4.74. If you anti-log negative 4.74, you get the Ka of acetic acid. Okay, to be nice, we're going to do question six and quit for the day. <laughs> okay, go do it. Okay, calculate number six and we're done. <laughs>